Good afternoon and thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of Bronx TV News. Today is Friday, April 24th, 2015. I am Sergio Puente. And I'm Jennifer Galindo. UTRGV is set to open its doors to thousands of students in just four months. That's right, Jennifer. Student population is expected to rise and this left many wondering who will, who will represent the student body? Well, Sergio, history was made this week as students voted on UTRGV's first ever SGA president. Daniel Gavon brings us this Bronx TV exclusive. With nearly a thousand votes, Alberto Adame was elected as the first UTRGV SGA president. Adame, who served as SGA president at UTPA this past year, is excited about continuing to serve the students. The main purpose of, of uh, kind of doing this is trying to keep up a continuity that was established, uh, of the process that was established over this past year. Of course, we worked on a lot of processes uh, inside the university. Uh, I got to know a lot of UTPA, UTV, and more especially of UTRGV. So I felt that if we, if we kept the, the administration, the continuity that we, that we had from last year, we could really accomplish great things. After putting a cap on the tuition rates at 12 hours, Adama's aim is now on class availability and school unity as well as policy. The main issue, I, I would say, is uh, the academic policies because right now I'm mean, working on the committee. Most of the work is almost finalized. I mean, I'm still getting a few emails here and then, but uh, really a lot of, a lot of these issues are, are sort of uh, kind of trial and error, seeing uh, at the end of the year, uh, after we go through the first year, two, first two semesters of UTRGV, even the first semester, what worked and what didn't, and from there, uh, can we make any amendments or changes necessary? Along with Adama, Denise Molina was elected as Brownsville Vice President, while UTPA's VP will be Jorge Gonzalez. The next goal for the president is to fill about 20 remaining Senate seats. Reporting for Bronx TV, I'm Daniel Galvan. UTPA's fine arts program will now have a new place to call home after almost three years of construction. That's right, Sergio. After months of delays due to weather conditions, the academic and performing arts complex has finally opened its doors. Bronx TV's Melinda Garza has the story. This is a historical moment. This is a, a game changer for our performing and fine arts. The performing arts complex at UTPA made its debut after two years of construction and planning. This performing complex is not just a performance hall, it also has rehearsal halls. So every different ensemble, the orchestra, the band, all of these groups can, can now have the best rehearsal facilities as well. The new facility was part of a $42.7 million project approved by the University of Texas Board of Regents. It features a 1,000-seat auditorium and four rehearsal halls that will be used by about 4,000 music majors. I'm just really excited that we're at the, at the end of this great project and uh, everybody is really excited and looking forward to the, to the opening. Construction on the 60,000 square foot center began in 2012. The three building complex will house practice rooms, classrooms, and music and listening labs. After the finishing touches were added to the new performing arts complex, the UTPA community gathered to show support to its fine arts students with their grand opening concert. Reporting for Bronx TV, I am Melinda Garza. The City of Edinburgh has unanimously voted on renaming a portion of Van Week Street to Dr. Robert Nelson Drive. The renamed section runs from, runs from Sugar Road to Miguel Navarez Road. The name change was requested by the University of Texas Pan American Faculty Senate, Staff Senate, and the Student Government Association to honor Robert Nelson's service accomplishments and contributions to both the campus and the city. Bronx TV and Radio won a total of 12 awards earlier this month at the Texas Intercollegiate Press Association competition. The annual convention was held in San Antonio this year and hosted more than 30 universities from across the state. Bronx TV News received its biggest achievement this year by winning first place in the Best Television Newscast category. Bronx Radio and TV, the Pan American Newspaper, and the Panorama Magazine make up the publication departments on campus. Texas may be getting closer to allowing handguns to be carried on public universities. Senate Bill 11 got the initial okay in the Texas Senate last month. However, some UTPA students are hoping that legislators will block the bill and keep guns out of the university classrooms. I think that if we had more classes, we, there were stricter laws as far as getting a gun, having, getting certified, and being, a, being able to handle guns. I think if those were stricter, I think um, people, would, people would respond better. Even if we don't reach our, our goal of preventing this from passing at the, at the state level, we will create awareness of what's going on and kind of start these debates going because uh, as, I, as I was speaking to, to a lot of students right now, many are not aware and many are aware and they have 
contrasting opinions with their friends. So we're kind of starting getting that conversation going on, which I think is pretty, pretty cool. The 2016 presidential, presidential campaign has kicked off with four candidates competing for a nomination. Three of those candidates belong to the GOP party, Texas Senator Ted Cruz, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul, and Florida Senator Marco Rubio are looking to earn the Republican nomination so far. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is the only Democrat who has launched her campaign. This is Clinton's second attempt at running for the White House. Undocumented students in Texas may lose their in-state tuition. That's right, said Hill. Dreamers testified against Texas Senate Bill 1819, a bill that would end in-state college tuition rates for undocumented students and force them to pay out-of-state rates. It would also make college a lot harder to afford for most undocumented students. RJP Hernandez tells us how UTPA students could be affected. As Texas lawmakers find themselves closer at attempting to repeal the DREAM Act, a feeling of uncertainty looms over the heads of undocumented students. Senate Bill 1819 would force about 25,000 undocumented students to pay out-of-state tuition, 800 of which are students at UTPA. This is my country. I've worked here, I've studied here, so it wouldn't be fair for them to take that away from me. It would be like crushing my dreams, my dream of graduating and getting a college degree. For Sanchez, voicing her opinion about affordable tuition on campus is vital to spark conversation among other students. But I'm setting a um, path for my siblings, for other students to know that there is a way to go to college, that, to open doors for them. Currently, full-time enrollment at UTPA, based on 15 credit hours, is about $6,100. However, if the measure is approved, undocumented students could pay as much $17,000 a year. The majority of the financial aid that they are currently eligible for, they, they would not, they would not be eligible for. So, so it probably, it would um, put a lot of students in the situation that maybe they, they really wouldn't be able to afford to, to go to school. Garcia said the measure would not only change the cost of tuition for DREAMers, but also impede them from qualifying for state and institutional grants. A lot of the programs do require for the student to be considered a Texas resident. So then they, they would miss out in practically the majority of the programs. Right now, the only programs um, that don't require Texas residency are basically your scholarships. Merari de la Fuente, a dreamer at UTPA, believes everything they do on campus to keep in-state tuition makes a difference. Every little thing that we do, every little thing that we contribute to, to keep in-state tuition, it's a, it's a big help and that, you know, if we keep fighting, if we keep strong, they won't take away what has been given to us and what is rightfully ours. We are not we are not criminals, we are not anything bad, we're just students and people trying to live our lives in the only home we, we know. The Senate Committee on Veterans Affairs and Military Installations voted 4-3 to three last week in favor of the bill. However, the bill is currently at a standstill as lawmakers wait for it to be placed on the intent calendar for a full Senate vote. Reporting for Bronx TV News, I am J.P. Hernandez. Weather across the valley has been unpredictable over these past couple of weeks. It has. We had storms last night, clouds this morning. Arisa Maradesendez is live in the studio in our weather center to bring you the latest. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Isa Maradesendez. Let's take a look at our weather for today. We will be seeing mostly cloudy conditions throughout the day today with temperatures at 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Our winds are running at 15 miles per hour, but we will continue to expect those humid conditions we have been seeing this week. Overnight tonight, temperatures do go down to about 75 degrees in Harlingen and McAllen at 78 with cloudy and humid conditions overnight tonight. For tomorrow afternoon, temperatures go up all the way to 100 degrees in Rio Grande City. At South Padre, they do go down to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. The we will be seeing clear skies, but it will be very, very hot. In our drought monitor, the northern part of Texas has been very dry. We are clear here in the valley since we have been seeing some rain. In our almanac, the most record high was 103 and our lowest was 50 degrees. Sunrise was at 7.02 a.m. and our sunset will be at 8.01 p.m. In our seven-day forecast, Saturday and Sunday, we will see cloudy conditions, but Monday we do get some rain. Some spotty storms around the valley with a 30% chance, but the temperatures will be high at 95 degrees. And then the sun comes back out on Tuesday all the way to Friday. We will expect mainly sunny conditions with 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That was our seven-day forecast for this week. Back to you guys in the studio. Earlier this month, hundreds of athletes competed in the Texas High School Women's Powerlifting Association Championship.
Among the team, a local champion emerged, hoping to bring pride to her school. Bronx TV's Vanessa Mates has the story. If you are one to judge a book by its cover, what sport would you guess Alexandra Winfrey excels at? Would you believe that she uses all of her 114 pounds to win two powerlifting state titles? My brother was in powerlifting and he told me to join. I was like, okay, sure. So I put it on my schedule and I started to love it. You know, I kept working at it. I wasn't the best, but within time, you know. As a junior last year, Winfrey won the first girls powerlifting state gold medal in Sherryland High School history when she squatted bench press and deadlifted a total of 800 pounds to take the medal. But now as a senior, Winfrey set out to do something she had never done before. I moved to Pioneer, it'd be a good beginning and I wanted to set a, a goal for myself to be able to win here at Pioneer to be Pioneer's first state champion and I was able to, to succeed at that. Winfrey, a state record holder in two different weight classes now, thanks to her 365 pound deadlift this year. <laughs> Winfrey has kept her eye on the prize, never letting any misconceptions about the sport get in her way. How does that happen? Your boyfriend plays golf and you power lift, but it doesn't bug me. So he's not bothered by the fact that you can like out bench press him, right? No, I think he's proud of me. <laughs> As one door closes, another is opening. Alexandra will continue her passion for the sport in the next chapter of her educational career. Well, I've recently applied for UTPA for the summer program and will hopefully transfer to UTRGV. And I'm really excited for what this school has to offer. And if everything goes well, we can get a powerlifting club approved and we can start a powerlifting team. For Bronx TV, I'm Vanessa Matis. From the red carpet to the big screen, the world of entertainment never seems to stop. Arisa Maracendez has the latest entertainment headlines. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Isa Maracendez. In this entertainment section of Bronx TV News, let's take a look at our top four stories happening right now. Sandra Bullock is people's 2015 world's most beautiful woman. The 50-year-old Oscar-winning actress apparently laughed when she first heard the news, joking, no really, that's ridiculous. The single mom has her own thoughts on what makes a woman beautiful. She says, real beauty is quiet. The people I find most beautiful are the ones who aren't trying. You can catch the actress as she gives voice to a supervillain in the upcoming film Minions, which hits theaters this July. And controversy surrounds the latest Batman. Ben Affleck has responded to the controversy in which he asked the producers of the PBS program Finding Your Roots to edit his slave-owning ancestry from the show. The Oscar win winner released through his Facebook account a response saying, After an exhaustive search of my ancestry for Finding Your Roots, it was discovered that my distant relatives was an owner of slaves. I didn't want any television show about my family to include a guy who owned slaves. I was embarrassed. The very thought left a bad taste in my mouth. The Batman vs. Superman star says, I now regret my initial thoughts that the issue of slavery not be included in the story. Affleck hopes that tension on his PBS actions in the last few days leads to a wider discussion of slavery. The whole world joins Paris Hilton in mourning after her chihuahua Tinkerbell dies at age 14. Hilton took to Instagram on Tuesday to let us know that the pup was no longer with us, along with posting a series of photos in memory of the teacup chihuahua. The blonde beauty said, I feel like I've lost a member of my family. She was such a special and incredible soul. Hilton wrote, we went through so much together. I can't believe she's gone. I will miss her and think about her for the rest of my life. I love you, Tinky. You are a legend and will never be forgotten. Hilton also mentioned that to honor the memory of her little four-legged legged companion, she will remember the most special moments they spent together. And a fluke accident might leave a fan favorite out of Dancing with the Stars. The professional dancer Derek Hoff was injured while rehearsing for the show. This may be bad news for dance enthusiasts. The top pro may be sidelined the rest of the season with injuries to his right foot and left ankle, his representative told People magazine. In addition to performing on Dancing with the Stars, Derek is also on the male lead in the New York Spring Spectacular at Radio City Music Hall, which is scheduled to run until May 3rd. There's no word on whether he will continue with either project. That was it in our top stories for this week. We'll see you next time.
UTPA is known for having some great hot spots around campus. That's right, Jennifer. But how well do you really know the buildings you pass by on your way to class? Daniel Galvan takes us on a tour of the campus on this week's edition of Man on the Street. In less than a year, UTPA will become UTRGV. And for those of you that don't have the luxury of attending this university, here's a tour of the campus. This is like MTV Cribs without the cool shoes, celebrities, and we haven't been canceled. Yet, here at UTPA, the very first thing you'll notice is the Bronx statue. And I gotta admit, it is pretty awesome. Although, I do wonder how we're gonna deal with this, with the whole changing our mascot to Vaquero thing. I mean, maybe uh, we could put a guy on top of it. We have huge satellites here. I believe we have DirecTV and we have all the greatest channels. We have HBO for Game of Thrones, uh, the Food Network, shout out to Guy Fieri. And of course we have OWN because you can't spill education without Oprah. Now this is the UTPA track and field for all the students to get their good old workout in. Here you can run, uh, you can play soccer with this goal that may or may not have a net. You can do a hurdle, you can jump over that. You can even, and this is my favorite, you can sit on a bench. And uh, here is really where you can get a good workout. And of course over there you got the tennis courts with our, you know, our tennis players. All right, I just had to point this out. I just found a parking space that's within like a mile of the school. This is amazing. Um, this is like seeing a picture of Channing Tatum with his shirt on. This is rare. So right there is the Physical Science East building. And in case you ever forget what direction you're going in, boom, Physical Science West building. Just look at the building names. Right here is a trash can and this is where trash goes. Oh wait, <laughs> oh that was my phone, my bad. <laughs> Sliding doors. So right here is the sundial, and this is pretty cool because you can use the sundial to tell the time if you look on the ground, and uh, you could do that or like just be a normal person and use your phone. Now this is a sign of my favorite building here at UTPA. It's the Sandello's Flatbed Cafe and also the science building, but I love the cafe. If you're watching this and you're not a UTPA student, I have one question for you. Does your school have a cat feeding station? I don't think so, because this is where the cool cats hang out. If you're still at UTPA after class and you wanna chill, come by the grill, get your fill. It'll only cost a dollar bill. This is the student union, and as you can see, Students love the food here at the student union. Now I'm here with JP. He's a UTPA student for three years. And JP, uh, what's your favorite memory here at UTPA? Well, no tengo tantos favoritos. La peor es cuando me caí en los escalones de adentro. Estaba subiendo a jugar a billar con mis amigos y me caí enfrente. Sí, ah, sí, sí, señor. Um, I don't know what you said. I, I'm an awful student. So apparently you can't be running around with the camera randomly filming things. Lesson learned. I'm forced to wrap this up. I'm back here in the Bronx TV studios. But it was a pleasure showing you guys around UTPA. And uh, that's it for me. I'll ring you later. Reporting for Bronx TV News, I'm Daniel Gavon. Before we go, we want to remind you that you can stay up to date with Bronx TV News on our social media accounts. Like us on Facebook by searching for our page Bronx TV and Radio. You can also follow us on Twitter. Just search for our Twitter handle, Bronx TV Radio. And if you would like us to cover something, tweet us with the hashtag story idea. We want to thank you for joining us for this week's edition of Bronx TV News. I'm Jennifer Galindo. And I'm Sergio Puente. Until next time.